Well, the changes that they made to the Green Acres program the last, legis last legislative session is going to have negative impacts on the environment and serious financial consequences for small family farmers. Democratic Visions is handmade in Eden Prairie and Minnetonka by DFL Senate District 42. The Green Acres program allows the taxable value of farmland to be taxed as farmland, especially when rates are being driven up by nearby development. Changes to that Green Acres program were made in May during the 2008 legislative season and they're causing problems for farmers. Heidi Morlock operates a 67-acre farm in Belle Plaine Township in Scott County. She grows fruit and vegetables and sells directly to restaurants and local markets. Her farm is on the Green Acres program, and she and farmers around the state are worried. Heidi, why are we worried? Well, the changes that they made to the Green Acres program the last, legis last legislative session is going to have negative impacts on the environment and serious financial consequences for small family farmers. Explain how, how, how. The Green Acres program um, allowed for farmland to be taxed at an agricultural rate as opposed to um, development or in the case of Winona County, um, recreational land is driving up the value of farmland and it allows farmers to remain on the land otherwise they'll be they'll have to sell their land to pay for taxes. The Green Acres program has also enabled farms to defer the payment of special assessments until the farm was sold for development or was no longer qualified. Until last year, a farm could also be sold or transferred to a family member and remain on the program without penalties. A farm could also enroll former ag parcels that had been converted to conservation programs. The 2008 legislative attempt to reform imperfect aspects of Green Acres was well intended, but reaction against the actual changes has sparked a variety of new bills this session to reform the reform. So uh, you're saying that you and a number of farm groups around the state want the law kind of back to where it was. Yes, we're working for a full repeal. I've been working with closely with Land Stewardship Project um, on trying to get a full repeal. We've written a letter to all of the Green Acre participants in Scott County, over 700, urging them to call their legislators and key committee members. Um, I've wrote, written letters to the editor. I've testified before the Senate um, Ag Tax Committee as well on this issue. And there's over 22 environmental groups as well that are asking for a full repeal. So th this isn't just a few rich farmers looking for a, a big tax break to continue? No, actually, it, this affects more so small, sustainable family farmers because they're the farmers that have um, a diversity of ecosystems on their farms. Um, they're the ones that have a, a wetland here, woodlot here, um, and these are small acreages. Yet the auditors in the counties um, consider development the best use of land and not agriculture. And so without the Green Acres program, they're going to tax farmers at um, the highest and best use of the land, which for them is development. And then that, that's the assessor's point of view. Exactly. Um, what will happen if the law isn't re-amended uh, to be more like it was before 2008? Our farms are going to go out of business in the metro area? Absolutely. Um, I've talked to my county auditor, and land values in Scott County vary from $6,000 to $67,000 an acre. And so if these changes aren't repealed, the, quote, non-productive land could be valued at $67,000 an acre, and then those taxes would have to be paid on that. So this is the beginning of a creek that's lined with trees that's considered non-productive. Um, that's keeping the soil from going down the creek. And this I down. view a farm as a working hole, as one, um, one unit. And the wetlands, the woodlands, windbreaks make my other farmland more productive. And the changes made um, in the last legislative session want to separate farmland into productive and non-productive land. So you're saying um, that these environmental values that are getting 
tax deferment breaks uh, in the Green Acres program mm -hmm. are actually a part of legitimate a agriculture. Exactly. And a lot of small working family farms have wetlands, woodlands, buffer strips around creeks, and it's part of an entire working farm, and it can't be separated out and individually valued. Farmland in Eden Prairie can be appraised at around $136,000 an acre. Now, if a farm's property tax rate is as high as the homes nearby, goodbye farm. About a quarter of the metro area's farmland is enrolled in Green Acres. Minnetonka and Bloomington each have five parcels, Plymouth 29, Eden Prairie 26. Uh, people that live in the urban areas, uh, by seeing a farm operating right in the midst of their presence, uh, they get a whole lot better understanding where their food comes from and how it's grown and how it's marketed. Many farmers like Terry Pika and Heidi Morlock sell directly to local food stores, garden centers, restaurants, and farmers markets. And although everyone loves Minnesota fresh produce, the link to the Green Acres program or a local farm isn't always understood. Thanks for being with us. Until next time, this is Tim O'Brien. Democratic Visions is handmade in Eden Prairie and Minnetonka by DFL Senate District 42. Norbert Gurness, Chair. Democratic Visions can also be seen on our website, dflsd42.org.